another educational experience with Feather Razor, Feather Blades, and Jatai. This is Rebecca. She's agreed to donate some hair for your educational benefit. We're going to create a short, contemporary, undercut pixie shape, showcasing some tools and equipment. We're going to have some fun, and we're going to learn along the way. For Rebecca's haircut, we're going to isolate some of the interior and we're going to do a severe undercut with our clipper, tapering through the perimeter of the haircut. The hair that remains above the crest line is going to be square layered, straight back and straight up to create some weight to give her some styling options and flexibility. She's going to be able to firm hold gel and even a flat iron to get everything straight up or she may choose to wear it light and down. We're gonna be using our razor to create not only the length with softness, but also some internal texture. We'll have some conversation about when and where we should be razor cutting. We have clippers, we have scissors, and we have razors. All powerful tools fundamental to the shapes we build and create. And there's a time and a place for every one. I like to say in the world of hair cutting, we need a full toolbox. And what I mean by that is the drawer that is our styling station is our toolbox. Every one of us needs scissors, razors, and clippers. The toolbox must be full. But I also like to think that that toolbox is up here. We need a full toolbox. We need to know that when a client expresses their desired hair outcome, and when they show us a picture, then we need to know that when we reach into the drawer or into the toolbox, what comes out? Do we take out the clipper, do we take out the razor, or do we take out the scissors? When and where is which tool appropriate based on density, based on texture, and based on our desired outcome? It's a combination of what they bring us, what we know, and the capability of our tools that allows us to create the things we do every single day. And we'll showcase that throughout the video. Blade Glide Plus as our cutting lotion to hydrate, maintain moisture. More important when we get into the top in just a minute for our actual razor cutting, but right now it's a great way to moisturize, dampen the hair, to come in and segregate for the undercut. So we're just going to spray this side, we'll work with this side, then we'll address the opposite side separately. But we're going to come in and we're going to strike our line. Everything below the line is going away, and everything above the line is going to be kept and treated as longer. I'm going to use a curved linear line that's going to come straight across, just north of the parietal ridge of the crest line, the widest point of the head. I'm going to separate that, segregate that. The blade glide provides a little bit of tack, the hair stays, but we'll also put a grip clip in there, and we're going to follow the curve of the head. I'm going to curve down, and one more grip clip to isolate this side, and we'll be ready to cut. We're going to come in, and in this case we're not really tapering, as much as we are cutting off the perimeter, so we're going to keep the blade flush to the head up to our separation line. And we'll use a smaller comb, a detailing or a finishing comb, to hold that up out of the way. Not as easy as it looks. Sometimes where we have variations in head shape, or what I call variations in cranial topography, sometimes we're going to come in there and tighten up the skin just a little bit to make sure we're getting a nice, smooth finish. I'm angling down and away following the shape of the head here, and I'll blunt that as I finish out this side when we tie the other side back and through. As we like to say, repeat on the opposite side.
and down and twist and notice how that flattens out that area because normally we have in a standard upright position there's a hollow here or a low spot and to try to dig in there with the clipper can be difficult but if the chin comes down and the head twists the trapezius muscle through the rear corner like that tightens up and you get right on there beautifully and apply a beautiful finish in through a corner like that. We're finishing up our undercut by tying the two sides together. We selected a point just, just, just a little bit north of the parietal ridge, the widest point of the head, uh, at the sides of the head. Carried it back, carried it through, and then I blunted it off to finish out the back. That's going to let us leave some, some length in through the crown and the back of the head here to create a nice head shape with the additional length that we keep. And we'll do some tightening up in just a moment. We're not blocking a sideburn, we're cleaning around the ear just for definition and to create a nice clean silhouette. We're not going to block a sideburn on this haircut. And at the rear quarter panel, we're just going to tap, 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 tap to create a defined perimeter line and we'll clean up this extraneous hair in just a moment with our nape and body razor. Notice I'm not going to cut across the bottom edge. I'll clean down in through here with the nape and body razor just a little bit, but I don't want to put a block men's neckline on a really sexy short ladies haircut. The perfect companion to these short, tight, modern, contemporary haircuts is the feather nape and body razor and the unique feather nape and body razor blades. These blades allow a cosmetology professional or a barber to create crisp, clean, defined edges and stay within the letter of the law as it relates to the use of straight razors and blades. Where I live, a licensed cosmetologist cannot legally use a straight razor on skin unless they use a feather nape and body razor. The unique design and configuration of the blade with its integrated safety guard that wraps across the blade surface allows us to prevent nicks, scrapes, and cuts, yet at the same time yield small, smooth, clean, and close shaving like we've come to know and love from our feather razor blades. I'm gonna put this blade properly in the blade disposal bin, and I'm gonna open up a brand new package of Feather Nape and Body Razor Blades featuring the no-touch system that we've come to know and love that allows us to use these blades safely. Blades in the tray and the razor allows us to simply slide in and pick up a brand new blade without the need to handle the blade. Put the blades away and we're going to use the Jatai shave cream to prep the skin and the surface. A light mist of Blade Glide Plus before we apply the shave cream. A small amount of the shave cream in our hand and we'll give the product to the customer so they know what we're using. We'll let them hold it. They can smell it. They can learn a little bit about it by reading the label which ultimately will lead to purchase on the way out the door at the end of that haircut service. All the principles of razoring and shaving are the same. We're going to apply pressure on the skin. We're going to use our angle or our approach. And notice how neatly and cleanly that works. Opposite side, same situation. Applying pressure on the skin. cleanly defining the line that is the perimeter of the haircut. I'm going to stay low here. I don't want to block a neckline, but I'll clean up any extraneous hair beneath it, allowing a nice natural finish 
to the base of the neckline befitting a short haircut of this time.